you all for having me here, and thank you to the Association of Energy Engineers. Um, I'm hoping this uh, this time speaking in front of you is going to potentially make me eligible for a CM uh, certification. <laughs> so we'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, it's very much a pleasure to be here. Um, I wanted to uh, quickly a hand. Who who is not from uh, Seattle or, or from Washington in the room? Okay, great, excellent. Well, welcome uh, to the home of Starbucks <laughs> and many other great companies and artists and restaurants and markets. So we're very happy to have you here. Um, another quick round of uh, hands here. Who uh, is familiar with Starbucks Coffee Company? <laughs> okay, great. How many of you are uh, regulars? So we call regulars at least once a month. Oh, great. How about uh, once a week? Oh, okay, good. Um, anyone coming once a day? Oh, okay. I still have How about twice a day? <laughs> There's always one. Come on, I've got a Starbucks card for you after. after. <laughs> um, again, is there anyone who has never heard of Starbucks, never visited a Starbucks, or had a, a Tazo tea? Okay, no, okay, well that's, that's good news. Okay, excellent. Well again, welcome, welcome all of you. Um, we are uh, very excited to be here. Right here you can see a picture of uh, the original uh, Starbucks location. Starbucks was uh, founded uh, in 1971. This location actually moved. It had been in a previous uh, location. Um, the historic nature of Pike Place Market, I invite all of you uh, to go visit this store. We've had to be uh, withhold the integrity of the design uh, due to the historic nature of this site. It's a fantastic uh, place to go and visit and enjoy a cup of coffee. In Pike Place Market is the famous fish market, uh, where if you uh, go and purchase at least a six pound fish, you'll see it flying through the air. It's a pretty exciting moment. Um, in this store as well, a tradition was started of throwing uh, the cup once it's been labeled for the drink uh, you would like to have. So go and enjoy that experience at Starbucks. It's, it's a great experience to have. Today we're really looking forward to uh, sharing our journey uh, for environmental sustainability, energy conservation, all the other work uh, that we're doing to reduce the environmental impact um, and uh, contribute back to our communities uh, throughout the globe. Um, we're wanting to share some of our insights with you and demonstrate how this story of Starbucks journey on the path to sustainability uh, can be relevant to all of us in this room. So, am I clicking? Thank you. Am I good? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was mine. Talk about collaboration, so this is going to be great. <laughs> Starbucks, we have always believed in the importance of building a great, uh, enduring company uh, that really does strike a balance uh, between company profitability and social conscience. The idea that a company can do well by the act of doing well for others and in the communities uh, that we do business, touching the people of all aspects of our business, including our customers, our partners, and the communities we serve, is truly at the core of who we are and what we stand for. The mission uh, comes to life in three basic tenets, uh, ethical sourcing of our coffee, a focus, uh, a focus to improve the lives of people who grow our coffee, uh, how we take our responsibility of being a good neighbor, uh, being a force for positive action in the communities where we're doing business, and thirdly, uh, to our shareholders, um, balancing all these acts of doing well um, so that the business can endure and thrive and the communities where we're doing business enduring and thriving. 17,000 retail locations, uh, 58 countries, that's the scale, but what's truly important is over 60 million customers, consumers, walking through our doors every week repeat customers, coming into our locations, having moments of connections with our baristas and with each other, and entering into the theater of the Starbucks coffee shop. And that theater, what we're trying to establish in that space, 
is truly a model and a demonstration of our commitment to the environment. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, digital space, over 30 million Facebook fans uh, and their friends, and the biggest Twitter following uh, in its category. Over 120,000 committed and passionate partners uh, delivering the experience every day. Thousands of farmers and suppliers growing and producing our products. So with this scale comes a great responsibility. We know our success as a company is uh, linked to the success of thousands of farmers and suppliers who grow and produce our products. And we are committed to offering the highest quality, ethically produced, purchased, and responsibly produced products. That includes coffee, tea, cocoa, and manufactured goods. Community involvement, when it comes to the neighborhoods, cities, and countries where we operate, Starbucks is truly committed to helping communities thrive. While we have always had a very strong connection with the communities in which we do business and which we serve, uh -huh. there has never been a more important time for us to leverage our scale for good and serve as a catalyst for change in ways that make a positive difference in those communities. Last year, uh, during the April uh, month of community service, uh, we had 60,000 60, volunteers excuse me, in 30 countries on four continents uh, doing community work. Over 252,000 people globally benefited from these services, 1,400 community service projects, and the list goes on and on. And these achievements are a powerful reminder of what we can accomplish when we work together for the common good. And we get to environmental stewardship. And there truly is no other issue that connects us as a global community, that connects us in local communities to our global communities as environmental impact and taking care of these resources that are absolutely critical. We believe that the importance of caring for our planet uh, and working with and encouraging others to do the same. We are a company that relies on an agricultural product. We are very concerned about climate change, specifically as it relates to our core product, the coffee bean, the Arabic coffee bean, which is grown at high elevations and is very susceptible uh, to any mild change in climate. It is imperative that we not only address our own environmental impact, but that we encourage others to do the same because it is only meaningful change and global change that is going to enable our, our business to thrive and sustain. So this issue is an issue that connects us to our farmers in Costa Rica. It connects our customers in California who just received a drought uh, issue to our, our customers in China who are also uh, suffering from water shortages. It is an issue that can connect us so closely in a very global way. So what, is, uh, what are we talking about here from an environmental perspective? We, um, our first step in all of this work was to do a footprint of exactly what was, uh, in, what was our impact, what is our footprint. And we're focused on three uh, key areas in environmental impact when it comes to our store operations. One is that bin there, down on the right. Um, who's never seen a Starbucks cuff, coffee cup uh, littered on the street, right? Uh, it's not a sight that we like to see. Um, over 8 billion cups uh, are used for Starbucks globally each year. Uh, we know we have an issue here, and we are making significant strides. And if you take the cup from the food service industry as a whole, it is a huge impact. So any changes we can make, any work and progress we can move forward, is going to have ripple implications across the industry in a much bigger way. Water, tough one. <laughs> we sell water. Coffee is water. So when we're talking about conserving water, what does that mean to a coffee company when 98% of the product that we're selling is water? Well, we did a footprint, and what we realized was our overall water consumption is not going into the beverage. Only 8% is actually going into the beverage. The rest of it is going into the facilities, into the uh, sinks, and into the toilets, etc. So it was immediately clear we had a lot of opportunity to address. And we're making significant strides in our water conservation. Energy. Over 80% of our global greenhouse gas emissions are going into the stores, the electricity purchased to operate our stores. 
huge impact. We understand climate change changes climate change's impact on our business, and this is one an area of key focus for us. So, our steps are the following. We're going to look at commitments, clear, achievable goals, but aggressive goals, collaboration, innovation, and achievement. So you'll see very, very aggressive goals on all fronts, water conservation, recycling, consumer-facing recycling, all stores, 100% of our stores, will have a recycling bin globally available for our consumers. That is a matter of dignity and respect when our consumers, who are so passionate about this issue, cannot recycle in our stores. It does impact their experience. Green building, as of December 2010, all new stores for Starbucks are built to LEED certification. Energy conservation, very aggressive goal, 25% energy reduction by the year 2015. And renewable energy, we will be at 100% renewable energy purchase, offsetting that electricity purchase by 2015 as well. Most of our goals, aside from the LEED uh, goal, uh, do uh, come to the year 2015. So I figure I'll either have a job in 2015 or I won't have a job after 2015. <laughs> very aggressive goals. So on the journey, we're going to talk about collaboration. Um, one of the things that we understood very, very quickly is that internally, we need to engage so many stakeholders across the board. We've identified two key critical stakeholders, that is the store partners, those store partners that are in our stores and operating the stores and making daily decisions on how they behave in the stores, as well as our facilities managers who have been completely removed uh, from the decision-making on utilities. We've been managing uh, this work centrally and have not provided them with the information, the decision-making capabilities that they need to make the right decision to move the part forward. But again, basically everybody needed to come back to your point, Cal, talk about consensus. When we're talking about something like LED lighting or for HVAC, it's amazing the amount of consensus that we have to get together and move to move anything forward in any significant way. It is tough. Key and critical uh, to our partnerships are the relationships that we have with finance, capital accounting, and with procurement. Um, again, finance folks are our best friends. If we can talk money, they're listening, and they have a very loud voice throughout the organization. So make sure uh, collaborators out there that we get the business case right. It really helps us move things along quickly. Innovation. So there's nothing like the bright, shiny new widget. It gets us very, very excited. It is the oasis, the shining beacon. And we have to look at that. And unfortunately, between us and the oasis is a long, empty, dry, lonely desert. It seems that when it comes to innovation, there is so much risk associated with innovative products or the companies that are bringing those innovations to us that we're asked to basically take the journey along on ourselves. So what we're asking for here when it comes to innovation, we cannot do it without collaboration. So as an example, when it came to in 2008 when we started looking at LED lighting, in the day we were inundated with LED lighting samples. We had literally 50 samples across the board with varying degrees of success. There was one lighting sample that was unanimous across the board. From an aesthetic perspective, this was it. This was the, the, the winning light. Unfortunately, we couldn't find anything about the company. The company existed somewhere in South Africa. It appeared that their primary uh, company's uh, product was a mining lamp. There was absolutely no way that we were going to be able to move forward with this product, although it met all of our aesthetic requirements. So we had to go back to the table. At the time, Energy Star was still defining their requirements for an LED light. The utility companies had no idea of even how to start uh, talking about rebates for an LED light without the Energy Star requirements being put in place. So we were out there, we were trying to be innovative, but again, we were out there alone. 
We need everyone to come to the table. We need collaborators. We need utility companies to be more nimble around innovation as well. And we need large manufacturing, those with global, for us corporations, those with global networks, distribution networks, service networks, etc., to come to the table and be nimble as well around innovation so that we continue to get this thing moving forward and that all of us can take the knowledge that Starbucks and the experience that we're having and apply it across the board. So with LED lighting, for example, we did end up partnering uh, with GE and um, we had to work with GE because even GE's product at the time did not meet our strict aesthetic requirements. Many iterations later, we arrived on a lamp that we really fully believe achieves the warm and inviting um, and inspirational design of all of our stores. So it's an example of where we started uh, down the innovative path and where we ended up. We're very, very pleased with the results. By the way, the finance team is very pleased with the results as well. <laughs> Achievement. Um, showing here uh, First End Pike, downtown Seattle. It was our first uh, lead uh, retail gold certified uh, location. Very, very exciting and near and dear to the Pike Place Market, so in the same um, area. When you go into this store, it has a very merchantile feel. I'm gonna go through a few slides that represent our lead stores, where we have been able to certify, have certi lead certification, but also where we're truly driving the design, the aesthetic, and why is it so important? Because Starbucks represents the coffee house. It represents that place between work and home where you want to go and you want to relax. It basically, what we're trying to have it represent is home. And so, if we can demonstrate to our customers that environmental design, energy efficiency integrated into environmental design is a great thing to have and a great thing to adopt, we can touch the 60 million customers that are coming through our doors every day. That's the influence that we're looking to have. So bear with me as I go through some design slides. This is University Village, another LEED certified store. All the way into Japan. We are uh, rolling LEED certification globally. When I say every new store starting in December 2010, that is every new store in our global company operating markets. So here's an example of Kyoto Research uh, Park in Japan. This is the bank. This is a new, uh, very new location. Uh, we're talking here, this is in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, a strong component of local relevance. We've got um, Dutch design, Dutch tiles. That map there is old Dutch coffee trading routes. Um, exceptional space and it will be submitted uh, for lead certification. And the container drive through in Seattle, Washington. Has anyone seen this location? Okay. Great idea, reuse of materials. Basically, you can see in the background, that's uh, Starbucks headquarters there. Behind us are a number of containers, inspiring us to put two together and make an innovative uh, drive through experience. We are looking at operations again, um, behavioral implications and actions, and how can we drive that? We are looking to upgrade all of our equipment uh, specifications to the latest and greatest of energy efficiency standards. That includes our refrigeration, our dishwashers in the back, um, as well as our HVAC. All of our signage is being converted uh, to LED technologies. And we have co-developed with uh, Pentair Systems a very high efficiency reverse osmosis system. Um, that is basically reducing our water consumption and water waste by 50% in a store that has reverse osmosis system. So again, demonstrating uh, that collaboration together. We've achieved an energy conservation um, approximately a 7.5% towards our 25% goal. So we're part of the way there. We've been very successful with water conservation, achieving a 22% reduction. Renewable energy, we're at a 50% energy, 50% uh, purchase rate today, putting us on the list of top 10. And in recycling, we've launched uh, 
18% uh, of our stores now have recycling uh, in front of consumers in areas where it's not mandated at all. So we're making significant progress towards our goals. So at the end of the day, what does it mean for you to be collaborating with us, for colleagues to come together, collaborators to come together, and to work together? It means that we can demonstrate to our consumers that we can make this attractive, we can make this work, we can tell our consumers that this is the right thing to do. So we really are looking to have everyone come together and solve this solution together. And thank you very much.